Smith. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our third quarter's earnings call. We concluded our board meeting this afternoon, and I believe you have got a chance to go through the financial result and investors' presentation uploaded on the stock exchanges and the website. In the quarter three FY24, the company reported revenue of 345 crore and the EBITDA of negative 0.4 crore. Impacted by the sluggish global demand and the lower product price realization across the market. If I talk about the revenue mix, crop protection con uh, contributes about 69% of the to total revenue, and the balance 31% comes from the pigment segment. Revenue from our crop protection segment stood at 239 crore with a EBITDA of 5.1 crore in the third quarter FY24. The segment performance was impacted as the global demand continues to remain sluggish owing to the high channel inventory and the high interest rate scenario. We are optimistic that once the situation starts stabilizing, we are well pos positioned to leverage our state-of-art infrastructure along with the backward integration. Pigment industry has been on the downtrend since qu second quarter FY23 and the prevailing price erosion in the pigment industry due to demand contraction globally has impacted the segment's performance during this quarter. In the third quarter, FY24, the segment reported revenue and EBITDA of 105 crore and 0.9 crore respectively. We anticipate that the overall scenario will start normalizing from the next financial year, and we have all the enablers to regain our normal double-digit growth trajectory, which we had demonstrated throughout all this year. Nanourea and titanium dioxide would also start contributing meaningfully from FY25, which would help us make further inroads into the domestic market, increasing its contribution to our total revenue base, thus enabling us to strike a balance between both the markets. As of 31st December 2023, we have received 30 crores toward redemption of redeemable preference shares from Epigral. To conclude, once again, I would like to reiterate that our long-term growth prospect remains intact given our state-of-the-art manufacturing infrastructure, plant compatibility, wider product range, and geo uh, geographical reach which will help make many organics to command sustainable long-term position. With this, I hand over the call to the moderator to open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, 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 Ankit, if you can talk about how is the industry scenario globally and when is the you know uh, situation expected to stabilize, uh, especially the inventory de-stocking situation in the global markets on the agrochemical side then I'm talking about. Sure. Thank you, Ankit Ji. Uh, yes, as we know, the there is a global pressure on the chemical industry. Last three to four years were fantastic uh, for the chemical industry and particularly for the agrochemical industry, it was good. The demand uh, demand was very high. And uh, that was mainly because of the supply chain related issues after, during the COVID situation and after the COVID situation. But suddenly the supply chain became normal. Uh, things were easily available. Logistic cost came down, the timing came down. And uh, then at the same time, people were holding a lot of inventory at the, and the interest rate started going up. Because of this situation, now people stopped buying uh, 
from the future point of view which has impacted in this financial year we feel that now the inventory has started going down drastically in different different markets but still there is a inventory we feel for uh, next 3 to 4 months time so we feel from the next financial year from the first quarter onwards uh, things things uh, should start improving from the export market point of view sure 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 and uh, like uh, how are the prices behaving now you know, have we seen some stability in prices now of agrochemicals yes now the prices have bottomed out completely it is very much at the lower level so we feel that uh, once the demand improves there will be correction in the prices as well the price will start improving as well so um, which will we feel that from the first quarter onwards both things should happen demand should first improve and parallelly once that happens the price should start going up Okay. at the manufacturing level also now the inventory has come down drastically and uh, companies are running their plant at the lower capacity and they are not building up the inventory any further so uh, let's say uh, ankit if the prices don't uh, move up and remain at the current level however demand comes back uh, how is that expected to impact the uh, you know long term profitability of our company on the agrochemical side so uh, we also see that uh, immediate price correction will not happen initially the demand will start improving once the Im- demand will improve only after that slowly gradually the price will start going up but currently uh, the prices are at very much very much uh, lower level from this level there will be certain percent of increase will definitely happen because because at this uh, pricing level uh, it is very difficult to run but even with the proper utilization of the plant there will be some improvement in the numbers so so and uh, how is the scenario on the pigment side how is the demand and pricing uh, on the pigment side on the pigment side also the prices have bottomed out completely now it is not going down further so we also see that anything uh, demand improving in pigment segment will also lead to the price improvement uh, at the same time the demand has started in imp- slightly improvement in demand has started uh, in the pigment segment as well okay is it particularly on a uh, segment like cpc blue or the Oh, the entire industry, like entire segment, including Azos and the CPC blue business, are uh, seeing a recovery. So I would say now entire uh, pigment, but particularly as a make money, we are mainly into thalocyanin based pigment, which is pigment green and pigment blue. So in that segment, uh, there is slightly improvement in the demand. Sure, sure, okay, okay. And my last question is on the titanium dioxide capacity that we have set up. so you know how is that uh, uh, you know uh, operating and i think globally also there has been uh, pressure on uh, titanium dioxide players so how are we dealing with the situation uh yes there is a pressure because of the titanium dioxide but we are very bullish on titanium dioxide because ultimately we are targeting the domestic market where the demand is more than 3 lakh ton and uh, in, and the main application is into the paint segment and uh, when we talk about the paint segment in indian market they, it is growing in a double digit and a uh, lot of uh, big corporates are entering into the paint business so which will lead to uh, dem- good demand for the titanium dioxide and uh, so we are going to target mainly domestic market and third we would like to balance our revenue portfolio so as of now we are very much dependent on the exports market so uh, for many many years we were always beneficial but when we analyze this financial year uh, because of our over exposure to the export market we have been more impacted uh, compared to other players 
so we have uh, realized this and now we are going to focus on the domestic market as well so that will balance the uh, export and domestic market revenue profile and how are the prices there i think the prices have also crashed for the entire side right so yes at current prices uh, you know um, when do you expect to break even uh, do we do you think we can break even in next year or it will take longer time so yes again uh, as for the other products uh, the prices are at the bottom level so we don't see the prices going down any further so uh, we see anything happens uh, from here the improvement will take place in terms of pricing at the same time uh, in india uh, because we are targeting domestic market uh, indian manufacturing companies together have filed for the anti dumping duty for the uh, titanium dioxide it has already been filed okay okay but i think large part of uh, uh, the titanium dioxide demand in india used to be met by imports i'm sorry can you repeat your question large part of india's uh, titanium dioxide demand was met through imports right yes majority i would say more than 90% of the demand is met through the imports domestic capacity is 80000 ton and actual production is around uh, 70000 ton against uh, total consumption of uh, 3 lakh plus okay. Do you think we can break even? Uh, let's say it's not for the full year next year, but let's say by in the second half of uh, um, FY25 uh, in titanium dioxide testing. So we are very optimistic. We have taken the corrective actions in titanium dioxide business because in that business the majority cost is for the utility, steam power. Uh, the utility cost is quite high. and uh, we have now we are in the phase of commissioning our captive power plant also uh, for the kilburn which is a titanium dioxide plant so which will happen somewhere in this quarter fourth quarter that will reduce the utility costs drastically and help uh, in stabilizing the plant from the financial point of view how much is the capacity utilization of the titanium dioxide plant currently uh, as of now it is running low now it is ramping up slowly so we feel that uh, uh, in next two months time we'll be reaching 70% capacity okay so currently it will be like 20 30% capacity uh, you can say about uh, 30 40 40% capacity okay thank you thank you and wish you all the best thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of viraj from simpl please go ahead yeah hi am i audible yes we are you are audible yeah hi thanks for the opportunity uh, just couple of question first is on the crop protection side of the business uh, you know if you look at our overall business uh, you know synthetic phytoid is still a large part of our overall uh, molecule base so if you can just probably give some more color in terms of the demand supply dynamics uh, uh, you know generally in the acam space and especially for a synthetic pyrethro and i'm asking this because if you look at say last 8 10 years this particular family of molecule has seen a very healthy growth and due to disruptions in china we had seen a fairly large amount of expansion happening on in indian ecosystem as well uh, including for us so If you can just give some perspective in terms of the demand supply dynamics now in this business, uh, this family of molecule, and is it still a profitable play for us? You know, going forward, whenever the market recovers, do you still see opportunities for a profitable play in this market? Uh, sure, Vidya Jai. Uh, so I'm sure you are quite aware of the product range into crop protection business. So the pyrethroid segment product is a very very uh, relatively stable and the safe products compared to other crop protection insecticides so like in the there are different segments as far as the chemistry is concerned like organophosphate like neonicotinoid uh, synthetic pyrethroid so uh, uh, in among all the segments synthetic pyrethroid is relatively stable and uh, uh, has got a better shelf life uh, and uh, uh, this products are gradually growing globally and part of the synthetic pyrethroid products 
are uh, being manufactured only in India. I would say India is more competitive than China. It is, it is being exported from India to China. So uh, over there, India has got upper edge. And part of the uh, pyrethroid products, uh, China has got upper edge, but over there now as a make money, we are uh, partly backward integrated. So we are at par with China. Uh, so as a make money, we have a very strong portfolio for the synthetic pyrethroid products, and it will always remain very strong. In this financial year where the demand is under pressure, uh, there is some pressure on synthetic pyrethroid range product as well. But going forward in the next financial year, we see the, the, it, the demand will be back and uh, it will help company to grow in this segment uh, significantly. Uh, just a follow-up. Uh, you know, you said that uh, you expect maybe in a few four months of time, you know, some improvement in the overall uh, dispatches or shipments given to you, the inventory liquidation may happen. But if you see, you know, major markets, say in US or Europe or even that time, the season has not been that great per se, you know. Uh, the consumption levels are still weaker than what a normal season would require. So this correction in, uh, you know, inventory or the material, uh, what is this aiding by? You know, are you seeing any supply side adjustment or any shutdowns either? Or I can give any perspective. So, Virajai, yes, uh, because of the seasonal issues into different market uh, and the high inventory, it took long time to liquidate this inventory. Otherwise, normally it doesn't take this much time. So this time what happened, there was a high inventory at the uh, consumer level. At the same time, partly it got impacted with, because of the weather. Now, uh, no matter how bad the weather is, there will be certain amount of consumption, routine consumption will always be there. Now, it has, uh, there was a, uh, that consumption was taking place and we feel now that inventory, whatever is uh, there, will be cleared in next three to four months time. And from the first quarter onwards, the new price demand will also start picking up. At the same time, uh, in the recent time, because of the Red Sea scenario, the logistic time has increased by 25 to 30 days. So keeping that in mind, now the customer who are anticipating to buy, uh, let's say, uh, uh, from the logistic uh, point of view, now th they need to buy their purchase uh, approximately 25 to 30 days in advance, keeping Red Sea scenario in mind. So that will also happen uh, partially. So we feel that from the first quarter, things should start improving. But in your supply side, are you seeing any, I mean, maybe either in, in China or in India, are you seeing any capacity shutdowns, you know, either permanently or, you know, not bowling of capacity, any of those? indications you're already seeing or hearing, you know, in the marketplace? So in the good times, uh, people were making money and every company was looking at different, different products, expanding uh, into those products. Uh, sometimes the companies were not even backward integrated, but it was an opportunity kind of a situation where people took an advantage. But uh, now looking at the long-term perspective, Companies will only be making the product where they have a competitive advantage and where they are backward integrated. So a uh, lot of companies which were not fully backward integrated or not having a proper manufacturing base or having an opportuni opportunistic approach will be uh, going out of the market or will be stopping certain products from the market. And it has already started happening. Okay. Two more questions, sir. Uh, you know, you, you talked about in the presentation that the utilization in crop chem is around 70%, right? Uh, uh, so it's still a quite healthy utilization to achieve in the environment we are in. Uh, but when you look into the, the, say, the operating margin in the business, you know, capital level, uh, you've seen a significant moderation. So was there further provision in terms of inventory markdowns or, you know, I mean, are prices still moderating Q and Q? No, there was not much provision in this quarter. Uh, this quarter is mainly because we have got now uh, 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 more 
formulation sales was there in this quarter so there is a positive uh, more uh, volume in uh, formulation rather than technical sales so some of our technical and technical plants were not running at full capacity but for the technical plant there will be certain overheads which will continue so uh, that has impacted at the same time uh, because of our expansion there has been uh, interest cost and depreciation cost uh, which has also been uh, impacting us uh, in this quarter okay and in terms of funnel in the crop cam business uh, say in terms of new molecule pipeline uh, outside of synthetic pyrethroid how should one understand that pipeline for us yes we have a new product pipeline already uh, and lot some of the new product we are already uh, we are also adding in the next financial year but as far as the new product line is concerned in last one year we have added couple of new products like flubendamide spiromesifen uh, uh, cyfluthrin beta cyfluthrin pymetrozin so lot of product we have added but uh, those product will take oh, i think one or two years time uh, to uh, gain the market share because we are doing registrations in different different market for this products so uh, it will take one or two time two years to have a, a more revenue apart from pyrethroid range products okay just last question on the pigment side uh, any color on pricing and inventory situation i am sorry can you repeat your question any color you can give on the pricing and on the inventory level inventory in case of uh, pigment generally it remains uh, around one one and a half month sale so it is at that level only pricing is more or stabilized uh, as compared to previous quarter so more or less is the same level so no further reduction in uh, selling price okay sure thank you very much good luck thank you we are right thank you and the next question is from the line of rahul jain from credence wealth please go ahead thanks for the opportunity good evening ankit bhai am i audible good evening rahul yes rahul bhai ankit bhai just to take for further to the previous participant question in terms of you know the pyrethrides and the other products <coughs> which we have been introducing so first of all ki as you mentioned ki you visualize ki next 3 4 months there should be improvement on the demand side and if that happens pricing will also improve but given the capacity expansion which has been done by a lot of domestic guys as well as uh, some expansions on the you know uh, in the other countries so what could be the change this time compared to what has been seen in last 5 uh, to 6 years Uh, when the demand really gradually picks up or it will take some time for certain category of products and certain category of products will do much better if you can understand because one you said ki agrochemical as a sector you might see improvements from quarter one but will it be across the board or it will be different for certain category of products your thoughts on the same so rahul bhai uh, as i mentioned first demand will start improving from the first quarter once that happens then definitely there is still huge supply of various products so the the second phase would be increase in the price but now if i give you the example on an average there has been price reduction by 45 to 50% in depending on the product range mm. so it will not go back to the same level it will take very much long time to go back at the same level or it may not go in the future i don't know that but from this level definitely there will be some increase maybe 5% 10% 15% so because at the current level all the manufacturers they realize that it is not very much sustainable so there has to be increase in the price for sure uh-huh. but uh, it will happen based on the demand situation so first demand will pick up and later on the price will start improving no i'm give what i wanted to understand i understand when demands goes up gradually the price will move up but given the broad you know the sector within that sector you have some different category of products or one side you have the synthetic pyrethroid 
and then there are certain specialized products so how do you see the difference between the various category of products say going ahead for next 1 one, one and a half years leave aside next 3 4 months or 6 months but once things improve uh, probably do you feel this time it will not be the same for across and if not which are the products or which category will do much better than the other uh raul bhai it would be difficult to uh, category wise uh, identify the situation but uh, i can say broadly that from this bottom level the price should go up by at least 5 to 10% that is what we feel because it is at very much bottom level sure uh one more question so the way you are talking to your export customers uh and before covid and after covid so during the time of covid of whatever 12 to 18 months of course there were a lot of supply disturbances across the globe including from china but now when we talk about so what do you feel could be the change this time from this customers the global customers for us so uh, uh... from the global customer point of view you know immediately after covid people realized there were a lot of issues from supply point of view from china and even before covid because of certain environment related issues in china people were looking at china plus one strategy and when it comes to the chemical market uh, so definitely the second comes to india second chance comes to india uh, now in the uh, after covid in china also there has been significant increase in the capacity so mm. and they have lowered the price significantly in the current market situation but globally every company understand that the china's dependency is very uh, difficult you never know what will happen in china today they want to reduce the price they are keeping the price at very low level once everyone will be out they may increase the price so there is no sustainability so from the sustainability point of view global market wants to have the second source so the first let's say in the they will give priority to l1 let's say today it's a china but the second priority will always be there to india now it may be one third two third uh, situation uh, you never know but part of the business will always be coming to the indian market and company if we talk particularly in the case of make money even before covid situation when the price were normal at that time also uh, since 95 we have always been export oriented company so we have always been capable to fight against china in terms of the pricing model and even today we are very much confident so once the demand will improve uh, we will be able to gain a good amount of market share globally again and we will try to improve the profitability it will be difficult to reach at the uh, the level uh, before 2 years where we were but definitely from this year level there will be significant improvement so one last question sir uh like last uh the disturbance on the export side and the inventory destocking from the export market lot of the players domestic players are now focusing more on the domestic market which we have been also doing for last 3 to 6 months so if typically lot of players now who were earlier not focusing on the domestic market start focusing on this market do you feel uh, the competitiveness which will be much higher and thereby the domestic market might actually yield lower margins than what you would have expected so uh, when we are talking about the domestic market i would say uh, if we will stick to b2b in domestic then definitely there will be pressure on margin but somewhere down the line we need to increase our market share in branding hmm. so with that uh, we would like to balance our portfolio sure thanks and the bank that's very helpful wish you all the best thank you thank you very much all right thank you and the next question is from the line of bhavya gandhi from dalal and brochas stock broking please go ahead 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Couple of questions from my end. One, sir, you said that uh, post uh, normalization, you are expecting double digit revenue growth. This is with respect to AgroCap or a company as a whole? Uh, the majority growth will happen in agro. At the same time, uh, the titanium dioxide revenue will also come in the next financial year. And uh, the nano urea Migbani crop nutrition limited revenue will also come. And this year's base has been very low. So keeping that in mind, we see there will be good growth. Okay, okay. And also just wanted to know with respect to some of your key products, five, uh, top 5 to 7, can you just uh, give us a broad pricing, uh, how has been the pricing, I mean, pre-COVID level and uh, during COVID and current levels? So if we can, you know, sort of get an understanding of how prices have moved. So on an average, if we talk for the agrochemical, the prices have gone down by 45 to 50%. Yeah, but if you can at least for the, I mean, uh, top five products, lambda silatrine or fluben, flubendamide or uh, any any few of them at least. Flubendamide is a very new product as of now, so still it is not in top five. Uh, but for us, the key product is 2,4-D, cypermethrin, permethrin, bifenthrin, uh, lambda silatrin. These are some of the key products we have in our basket and. Uh, on an average, uh, there has been reduction by nearly 45 to 50 percent. What and uh, how? I mean, what was the price? Maybe let's take a, a, an example of 100. So pre-COVID, what was the price? And during COVID and post-COVID, you are saying it's closer to 55 rupees now. So what was the, uh, re, I mean, pricing trend at least? So uh, this year in the from first quarter only, actually, if you see that as compared to last year. So let's say if I give you the example of 2,4-D, then uh, it was somewhere in the range of $4 in the good times. It mm -hmm. has come down to below $2, le $2 level today. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. And with respect to backward integration, how much backward integrated are we uh, with respect to key products? I mean, N minus what level do we go up to? So for majority of our products, we are fully backward integrated. Okay. Okay. And our pricing, is it more or less similar to Chinese pricing, Chinese product pricing? Or uh, are we not competent when it comes to pricing in the international market? No, we are able to compete against China even in this situation. Uh, there has been pressure, no doubt about it. But even in this situation, we are able to compete with China. Okay. And also, I mean, like three, two, three, four quarters back, you know, the narrative was China plus one and all, all our agrochemical companies were, you know, giving way good guidances, adding capacities. But now again, you know, sort of uh, that China plus one, is it like more of an hoax or uh, are we still seeing the trend or it's only near term inventory destocking, which has, you know, sort of taken a toll on overall revenue? So I would say it is across the industry, every company has passed through the similar situation. But the companies which were more domestic and brand-oriented companies, uh, on those companies there has been less impact. Uh, in the case of Make Money, we were more, more than 85% of our revenue was coming from the exports market and that too on B2B segment. So uh, there is a significant pressure on companies like us. Okay. And uh, you mentioned that, you know, you want to, uh, I mean, expand your uh, B2C brand in India also. So, I mean, five years down the line, what sort of revenue are we targeting or at least the mix, if you can provide something on that front? So, Babiji, now we are coming with the Nano Urea project, which is in Make Mini Crop Nutrition and uh, which is uh, going to be a very much target-oriented product for Make Money. So we are entering into nutrition segment and with this product we would like to uh, take advantage into crop protection segment as well and expand our revenue. So down the line in the next five years we would like to be, uh, I, I don't want to give you the wrong number, but uh, there will be significant growth from this level uh, in uh, brand business for sure. So the growth rate will be much more in the brand business compared to the export business. 
Got it, got it. And since, you know, I mean, broadly, if I talk, you know, pyrethroid industry is a small size when you compare to overall ag chem. So is it like, are we planning to move into other chemistries as well, organophosphates or, I mean, the larger neonics or something of that sort? Globally, organophosphate chemistry is day by day getting uh, banned in different, different markets. Like chloropyrifos is one of the biggest uh, uh, organophosphate product, propanophos. So these products are getting banned day by day. So we are not targeting organophosphate segment. We are targeting the new segment. So flubendamide is a new segment. Then some of the spiromassive and pimetrosine, these are the new products we have launched in this year. So we have planned to add a couple of new products in the next financial year or in next two to three years' time. Okay, got it. Anything on the biorationals front? I'm sorry, bio? Biorationals or bioorganic chemistry, I mean? Uh, no, we are not targeting any bio product as of now. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's it from my end. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, good evening, Angita. Uh, <clears throat> one question is uh, on the pigment side. I mean, uh, uh, first of all, on this TiO2, as you have mentioned, that uh, utilization level will uh, probably be reached around 70-70% uh, by end of FY25. Uh, so, are we good enough in terms of uh, uh, of taking these uh, uh, volumes? And uh, I mean, how the customer uh, side we are placed? And uh, secondly, in, apart from this TIO2, uh, in pigment side, if we have to see a recovery or some kind of improvement, so where we should be? seeing, uh, I mean, which industry, end user industry we should be seeing, which would uh, help us to uh, improve from here on? Sure. So, uh, Rohitji, uh, as far as the titanium dioxide is concerned, uh, we have already started getting the right quality product, which is the main thing. So, our product quality has already been set, and uh, um, we have already started giving samples in the market and be looking at our experience in the pigment segment. We feel that we'll be getting the approval very fast. Uh, regarding the pigment industry, uh, again, I would say it's a similar situation where we were more of an export-driven company. We would like to focus from the pigment point of view in domestic market as well. Because even today in uh, Indian market, there has been a positive growth in printing ink segment, in uh, plastic uh, segment, as well as paint segment. So we would like to focus for the pigment business on uh, in Indian market. And, and uh, what timeline basically it will uh, need to crack these customers in the domestic market? So we were already there in domestic market, but we were not as a management or as a company, we were not putting much focus because uh, the volume, uh, the demand and the volume is low. So you need to give more service to more customers, there will be small, small volume. But as a company now, we are changing the strategy. We need to provide more service uh, to the small, small customers and expand our basket. So we feel that in next three years time, uh, we will be able to do that. and. Uh, we will be rationalizing between export and domestic over a period of next three years. Okay, okay. And one thing, uh, just, uh, just kicking on my mind, uh, this uh, Red Sea issue, uh, as we are talking about, and uh, somehow we are uh, even anticipating that there would be some kind of uh, uh, better ordering or uh, some some kind of improvement could be possible because of these issues. Uh, I'm just uh, doubting that if maybe we get some kind of a bump up in the volume because of uh, this issue, what will happen again after uh, uh, some time when again this uh, uh, inventory uh, stocking would be uh, again uh, haunting back as uh, already we, after a long time, we basically, I would say, come to that level there where inventory situation has somehow been considered as normalizing. But again, if uh, this red, shoe, uh, red sea issue 
creates a inventory situation in the system and again there would be coming few quarters we will be seeing again uh, uh, that uh, uh, pressure so uh, i mean how you are seeing this situation and uh, what we should be reading uh, on this so rohit ji uh, in the last one year not only the manufacturer but also the customer paid a heavy cost because they were carrying the high price inventory and the prices dropped so like the manufacturing companies made loss also i would say the distributing company the branding company those companies also made a huge loss because they were carrying high price inventory so even in this current situation where the red sea issue has arisen nobody is panicking and started buying in a big way people looking at the situation people will only buy as per their requirement but now they will only buy little bit in advance let's say if the requirement is up to 3 months then normally they will start uh, discussing today because now the lead time has increased little bit but nobody is going to be panicked and uh, like they will be uh, buying more quantity like during the covid time now that is not going to happen people have uh, learned uh, a lesson so that will not happen and uh, we feel this red sea situation should also become normal over a period of next one or two months time this kind of situation will create a global disturbance from the supply chain point of view so nobody uh, afford to uh, have that kind of effect so uh, i am so i believe that uh, the situation should go back to the normal in next few months time okay okay that's it from my side sir thank you mr flak thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of viraj from simpl please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity just two three specific questions on crop chem business uh, you know your earlier comment that the market say globally in insecticides is shifting from say all kind of phosphates to chemistry is like synthetic biotoy now if you look at the end growth right consumption growth in acca over a long period it's hardly been around 2 and a half 3% and uh for a category like sidir patak it may be around mid single digit so the end molecule growth itself has been around mid but the kind of capacity increase which we have seen uh in last 4 5 years is it's been significant so based on assessment right now what is the kind of over capacity we would have seen in uh synthetic biotoy right now and any rough color on the how many serious players will be there you know based on backward indication and other elements you talked about yeah so first of all viraj bhai let me correct uh, synthetic pyrethroid cannot replaced uh, by uh, cannot replace uh, organophosphate fully only part of the consumption will be shifted and the part yes. uh, majority will be going to the new chemistry and uh, regarding the supply situation yes there has been a increase in the supply situation now uh, as you know this are all regulated products now without registration regulation uh, this companies will not be able to sell now as a make money we are well versed with registration in different different markets for all these products so we have got a ready customer base and registration available now this companies who are to whom we are selling you know no matter what it is they will not be keep on adding new sources it doesn't make sense in spending time and money for the same product and kept on finding bad days so if they have a two supplier three suppliers and normally they don't look at the thing there there will be negotiation but the priority will be given to the only the supplier who are registered so as a make money we have we are having registration days in various market for all of all our products so that will differentiate compared to other players any color that of the over capacity in the market you know compared to say and demand is say 100 and what is the kind of over capacity in the market they go synthetic pyrethroid and other chemistries which we cater to 240 and so for 
uh, for different different product there has been some capacity uh, there has been over capacity but we see that certain capacities are already getting shifted to some different products because people realize that uh, for how long you will continue with the same product so uh, some shifting has happened so if we talk uh, about make money we earned uh, in last 4 years we have seen significant growth in our products but we have not expanded uh, into the same old products we rather than whatever we have earned we have spent into new product line so that is what uh, makes difference between make money and the other companies and you know where, given where the prices are currently for key technicals uh, would it be positive for us at the cross uh, contribution level i mean say in 240 or synthetic phyto and another new chemistry yeah so even today uh, it is difficult i'm sure because of the base has come down drastically so it is difficult but still the it is comfortable so where i'm coming from is you know if you see globally also a lot of uh, customers also own the registration they for want to add uh, say one more vendor or two more vendor uh, the timeline of the cost is not that significant so is it that we have to look at our next 2 3 years uh, given the way the capacity is available in the market would it be right to think that the kind of such a thing is maybe a new normal at least for next couple of years till demand itself catches up and you know uh, apply for the exam so viraj bhai as far as when we analyze the business definitely because of the more supply there will be pricing pressure but when it comes to doing the business the customer will buy only from the registered source so the first priority will come to the registered source now in this current situation when your business is not doing good uh, even at the customer level they will not spend time and money on adding the new supplier which is for the old product right they will only look at it for from the new product point of view so if someone has expanded the capacity if someone uh, let's say if i am not there in pyrethroid and i see the other company has earned lot of money in pyrethroid and if i put up the plant in pyrethroid then it will be difficult for me to uh, to get added uh, with the customer for the old products which customer is buying already okay and just last query was the capacity expansion the so for procrem right uh, uh we were only planning about it so any thoughts uh, uh are we now looking at planning it or even do it now virat bhai your voice is breaking can you repeat your question yeah earlier we were also planning for a phase 2 in crocken right uh, now given where the market is right now and given that many players are in distress uh, is there any thoughts on acquisition we have kept as of now phase 2 on hold uh, so we will wait uh, till the time things goes uh, back to the normal uh, but now we have got the basic infrastructure ready so even for the phase 2 uh, we can go very fast because we have got the environment clearance the basic plant infrastructure is already ready so uh, if we come up with any project then we can go very fast but for the time being i would say for the next one year we are not going to do anything for the phase 2 okay thank you and good luck thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of nitin gandhi from inquest please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question uh, can you share something on uh, mpp what are the utilizations in q3 and how do you expect that to go ahead for the new plant multi purpose plant yes yeah so the for the multi purpose plant utilization was quite low but uh, now we feel the utilization will start improving from the first quarter so was it below 25 and uh, where do you so see below, in... below 25 yes below 25 and uh, likely to be what 50 plus or 70 plus at q4 onwards we feel 50 uh, plus it should happen from the first quarter onwards 
can you just share uh, like what were the asset tons plan uh, when you started the thinking of this mpp and ty2 and nano nano is different uh, for the multi purpose plant uh, we were targeting uh, based on investment about two times asset turnover ratio and for ty2 TIO2 it is going to be kind of a little less than one or one is to one. Okay, so in that case, margin for TIO2 is expected to be much higher, about 35 plus, right? That's what NV says. It will happen. It's a different issue. But when you conceive the project and when you went ahead, this was the plan, right? So yeah, at that time the market condition was like that. Uh, Correct. But yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, regarding Nano, it's hundred uh, percent subsidiary MLC, right? It is hundred percent subsidiary of Make Money Organic Limited. Right. So, can you share some vision on that? Uh, how is the liquid uh, acceptance? Uh, where do you see? Uh, what you expect the utilization level, uh, acceptance level, product post year? Because you've done a lot of field survey, and you're likely to be just one quarter away. So, where do you see the things happening? Can you share? share whatever your experience of last whatever through so Nathan by when it comes to the nano urea we all know in India there is a huge subsidy on the conventional fertilizer like urea DAP and all so which is uh, last year it was two lakh fifty thousand crore as a subsidy amount so government has got a vision and target to reduce the subsidy level drastically so and because of that, they came up with this new technology. As of now, it is difficult to convince the farmer because the farmer is using this conventional fertilizer since many, many years. So it is difficult to convince them and uh, shift them to the new fertilizer, which is a nano urea. So we have started doing uh, activity in the field, promotional activity, giving field trial uh, to the farmers. So demonstration is the key area where the farmer needs to see the result by themselves. And once they will be uh, satisfied with the result, then slowly, gradually, they will be shifting. Uh, so if you see currently, because IPCO, when they came up with the product, there was no proper demonstration uh, at down the line field. They uh, linked the product with the conventional urea and they were pushing to the dealers as well as farmers to use it. But how to use it, that was not clear. And at the same time, there was a miscommunication that it can replace urea completely. Now, nano urea will never replace urea completely. It can only replace partly. So we, as a make money, we have started doing this activity. We have also informed IFCO because IFCO in a way, we have taken the technology from them. So. Uh, we have also informed IFCO that they also do the marketing in a right way. And uh, from the top level, we have passed on the message and they have realized their mistake. And now IFCO has also started doing the field activity in a right manner. So it will take some time. But I would say in future, definitely, there will be substantial reduction in urea and the market will start shifting to nano urea. So uh, we have a big vision when it comes yes. to the crop nutrition segment and uh, nano urea is not just one product. We have a plan to add many more products in the basket. Uh, so in next uh, one year time, we'll be adding a lot of products in the nutrition segment. Generally, based on whatever feedback you have, what do you think could be the acceptance level, whether it could be two crops, three crops, or two years? for farmers to actually start, uh, say, shift 10% of area or 25% of the area to this? So based on the government's number, if we go, then the urea market is close to 34 million tons in India. Out of 34 million tons, 9 million tons is being imported. So uh, government's target is to completely reduce the import which is 9 million tons of urea by somewhere in 2025. So my 
our analysis say it will not happen in 2025 they will be delayed by one year so by 2026 government will uh, take certain actions where they want to reduce import completely or uh, they don't want to import anything uh, as a urea product okay. so 9 million tons of urea will be converted into nano urea by 2026 that is what right. our analysis says and later on once that happens slowly gradually the remaining uh, uh, 25 million tons of urea slowly gradually if the farmers uh, get acquainted with the product then they will be using more nano urea is there any research paper something uh, which uh, by ifco or your study where uh, something is shared on the expected change behavior of farmers on this side uh they don't have any such study but they have conducted lot of field trial as a make money we have also conducted lot of field trial in fact as a company we are planning to showcase to the investors also where we take the investors to certain uh, rural area uh, and showcase the results and uh, have a meeting with the farmers where farmer can explain to the investors directly so we are trying to arrange that kind of uh, meeting maybe i look forward to be in first batch sure yes yeah. thank you very much and all the best okay thank you very much nitin bhai thank you ladies and gentlemen please press star and 1 to ask question we would like to remind participants please press star and 1 to ask questions as there are no further questions from the participants i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments uh, thank you very much uh, everyone so on the behalf of the management we thank you for joining us today we appreciate your trust and support on us with this we hope that we have been able to address most of your query in case of further queries you may reach out to mr gs chahal our cfo or mr nishant vyas our ir person and they will co connect with you offline thank you very much that was the last on behalf of nk mk global financial services that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines